great time. Thank you. Stacy, we're live. Welcome back to Facebook Live. Of course, I am Brody, and thank you again for being here. Let's begin with our updated totals. I don't know if you can hit the board, but we're going to hit the board behind me, show you those totals. This is pretty exciting. As we can work the screen here, maybe Matt, we can see it. So, $124,014.37. Remember, we were, we were at 375 in total number of donors last year, and right now we're at 275. We're 100 away, and usually the most important part of the day is coming from this point till midnight, so that's pretty exciting. We just unleashed four challenges, $10,000 to Northwood Outing Club. This was donated by Brad Olch, the chair of the board. He's very excited about uh, what's going on with that, so exciting beyond belief that if we can unlock that $10,000. Robin McGraw, who uh, is a good friend, um, has donated $10,000 to our soccer match, and that's gonna be dollar for dollar, I believe, as well. $10,000 from Karen and Reed Miller for the Ski Alumni and Parents, and that's the number of donors, I think it's 50, and then 15,000 from Jim Sutow, uh, hockey alum, class of 80, his wife Jane, and they gave us what we got. And we're pretty excited about that. So, yeah, this is exciting. This uh, this 45 minutes to an hour, we are going to be focusing on uh, educational spotlight, as you can see to my left. So I'm going to bring Noel Carmichael, the director of academics. That's not right. What do we call it? <laughs> academic <laughs> affairs dean <laughs> of. Faculty and academic affairs. So you have multiple jobs. Multiple jobs, but they all go hand in hand, right? Well, we, who we hire and what they're teaching and how they're teaching, it's all one pie. And if it was only that, that you did, right? Like, so <laughs> this is a, this has been a common theme. Every faculty member I brought in, John Spear, Gino Riffle, Carrie Wardlaw, I, I, what I want to know and what we want to understand is how many years you've been here and what are all the things that you do? Uh, this is my fifth year at Northwood. Um, and when I started Northwood in 2017, I taught ninth grade English and some drama. Um, and then I moved on to be a class dean and English department head. Um, and now this is my second year in this role as dean of academics. But I'll be honest, it feels like the first year because last year is kind of a wash and um, I try not to think about it too much. <laughs> yeah, none of those do. Yeah. It's nice to see everyone's face, right? Almost oh, everyone. I, I, seeing some of them for the first time. Some of the students who started here last year and you know, I'm saying, oh, that's what you look like. Exactly. Right. Oh, so how yes. do you finally see yeah. you? Yeah, now so. people can tell the difference between me and Mr. Riffle. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope. Yeah. <laughs> so look at this is a this is an exciting forty five minutes. We want to talk all about academics. We've got some great new programming and a lot of that new program has your fingerprints all over it. You you've been uh, Slowly and subtly 
making some changes. What's going on in the world of academics at Northwood School? Yeah, so, sometimes not so subtle, but yeah, sometimes. <laughs> That's me. Um, yeah, so a lot. You know, we have many programs that are in their first year running or second year running, and we have a lot more program, um, new programs and ideas coming in the next year or two as well. Um, and so one of those yeah. second year programs, mm -hmm. you teach? The integrated humanities. So we have an integrated humanities in ninth grade and in tenth grade. And that's, it's a course that, that counts for, for both English and history credits. Um, but really, it's much more interdisciplinary than that. If you visit that class, you're likely to, to see art, to see music, to see dance, to see poetry brought into the lessons. It's truly an interdisciplinary, I can't speak, interdisciplinary uh, way of looking um, at, at history and literature. What, what's the benefit for the student? Well, for, for me, it comes initially from a place of, of, of those subjects are not really separated in real life. Right? We, if, we, if we don't read the literature of history, how would we know what's actually happened in history? Right. Right? And if we don't have historical context, how can we understand literature that's being written now? So actually, the, the separation of those into different subjects for the purposes of schooling is, is somewhat fabricated. And so really, I feel like we're just putting them back where they belong and treating them in a way that allows students to look at it from um, more complex perspectives. Yeah, you know, I get that as a hockey guy and as a skating coach. Some power skating coaches break the skating stride down to such an inane level it no longer resembles mm. the stride, mm -hmm. and they do the drill, but then they can't apply it in real life. So right. what you're what you're kind of saying is that by bringing the history and the English together, it gives it context and richness. Is that right? Yeah, we spend a lot of time in the in the one that I teach, which is the ninth grade integrated humanities, um, corroborating, right, looking at different texts throughout history and saying is is this text saying the same thing that that text is saying about the same event, or are they telling us two different things, and how do we know which one is right, and do we know, or has whoever's written your textbook just made a decision, and that's what we're supposed to teach you? You know, what I love as a history teacher is, uh, I, 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 it, it takes a lot for me to write well, mm -hmm. which means lots of editing and people looking over my shoulder, so teaching writing was always a hard thing for me. I love that now you have English working alongside history, so that they can benefit from the expertise of both. Yeah, and this is a lot a, of the skills do inherently overlap. Yeah, and it's a team taught course. It is. So, um, it works um, differently in I think the ninth grade class and the tenth grade class. So when you have Miss Odell on, then you'll have to pick her brain on that okay. one for her okay. for her tenth grade humanities class. Um, but uh, Carrie Wardlaw and I co-teach together. I think you had her on earlier. We had her on earlier. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so she is my co-teaching buddy, and we. Um, we really, she's more a history lead and I'm more of an English lead, but it doesn't, it doesn't always divide that neatly, right, because of the way we're approaching things. So sometimes we take turns um, leading the class and other times it's both of us um, full on together. So it, it really depends on the day. So the term buddy I might have to use loosely <laughs> after you eyed her yesterday. I did, it was awesome. Can you explain yeah. what that was? You were, it was awesome. I you did. got her worse than anyone got. It oh. was great. I also got to find my advisee, Jasmine, who you'll also be seeing yeah, a little yeah. bit. So um, I probably have it coming to me, though, now that I've hide a few maybe of my we'll, closest Maybe we'll make some final money um, by offering Yeah, but that was, I believe it was a, a student-led yeah. initiative um, from the 11th grade class, if I'm not mistaken, yesterday where they um, uh, gave us an opportunity to, to throw pies in the faces of faculty and students um, uh, for a donation to Ring the Bell. Yeah, that's great. And that was uh, part of that total we saw, $5,000, over $5,000 the students just raised. Just from the students, yes. Just from the students, not counting that money. Right. Um, you add that money in, we're more like almost, I think they raised a, a couple hundred. So, But yeah. more. It's the first time in, in Northwood's history that we had so many kids donate. So yeah. it, it's really inspiring. 100 in, I think it's now 29 students uh, gave yesterday most of their class, so $20.24 or $0.22. Cents. Um, that was really exciting. Back to academics. Yeah. It's really exciting. Can you just quickly run through some of the, the newer type approaches we're going, obviously, integrated humanities. What are some of the other approaches go? Yes, well, one of the big themes of a lot of the new approaches is um, student-initiated endeavors, right? And so that's a big umbrella um, under which we have our uh, research programs. We have advanced humanities research, um, advanced STEM research. And in those programs, it's, it's a student with teacher guidance, of course, and expert guidance, um, de defining their own area of study, 
and it's going through the process of whether it's in the STEM research, they're actually performing experiments that are year long. Um, some of them actually ongoing. So we have a student this year working on a project that a student last year initiated and complete Lars did through the year, and now then this year Peppy took it over and, and continued with it. So, um, and they actually perform the studies and then write uh, research papers uh, at the end. So it's, it's a proper um, kind of uh, college-like academic um, research experience. So, but the students get to really define it for themselves. And then we have the Honors Independent Study Program, yeah. which I know you're gonna hear more about later, but um, that is even, um, even wider in scope where students can really choose any area of interest um, that they want to pursue that's not offered in traditional high school education. And we um, pair them with a mentor and they get to pursue it, some for part of the year, some for an entire year. Well, you're really good at giving it away because we're going to actually talk about the humanities and the set, independent set studies. Yeah, but yeah. well, I'm glad you're hearing yeah. more about those programs because they're really spectacular. and. and you know, all of this is only, um, you know, the independent studies in the humanities is just in its first year, um, this first year, and then STEM is in its second year. And so, one thing that I think is really exciting, and, and Northwood needs to get credit for, is that we're continuing to improve and we're adding these new initiatives during the pandemic. Like, we're not shying away from saying, right now we just got to cope and put on a mask and get through this. We're saying, no, we're still going to um, evolve and we're still going to grow and change even during this difficult time. Well, you know, I'm a big advocate. We work together on the uh, task force that's looking at academics. So real quick, mm -hmm. right? Um, where are we going to see academics go in the future? Not necessarily Northwood's going to incorporate it quickly, but what kind of things um, should a school like Northwood be looking at to give their students real world, real life advantages? Yeah, well, I think um, particularly in light of the pandemic, the, pa the pandemic has just like ripped the band-aid off of a lot of um, changes that uh, have been coming for a long time, right? And so it is time for schools, um, including Northwood, to look at, to, to, to question everything in a way. Like why is the school day organized the way the school day is organized? Why are certain classes for credit and other things you do and learn and experience in life not for credit? We have kids behind the camera right now. Working, why, why is that? They're learning, they're, they're applying skills, right? This is hands-on learning, right? So really, I think it's time as a school for us to, to really question everything. And that doesn't mean change everything, right? right? We may find things that we've been doing for, you know, 40, 50, 100 years, and they're still good enough for us to stick with, but it's time for us to be sure about that and to, and to articulate that. Yeah. Well, look, at, you're doing a great job shepherding the academics forward. That, you know, a ship like Northwood, it takes a little time to turn. Yeah. Um, unless, of course, it's a U.S. cruiser, they can turn quickly. Um, but the reality is, is that right now a lot has happened, and you've done a lot. So thank you so much for everything you do every day. And thank you. And we're going to bring in some of the, the people that yeah. are doing the very things that you talked about. Awesome. So thanks a lot. Yeah, and thanks for sharing. Let's ring the bell for Northwood, right? Yeah, ring the bell. Ring the yeah. bell. It helps everything out. All right, Noel. Thank thanks you so, so much. much. Yeah. All right, so next up we're going to bring in uh, Reed Smith, and we have two students who are doing the Advanced uh, Humanities program, and we're going to learn more about that. So come on over. Have a seat right next to me over here. Good, good, good. You can sit down. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Awesome, yes, okay. So, very exciting. So the way this works is we're very informal. You're going to introduce yourselves. And you're going to say your full name and how long you've been here. And because of this, we know you're in advanced humanities research. Give us just a, a little blurb on what your research is. We'll start with Reed. Cool. Welcome. Hi, thanks. Um, my name is Reed Jewett Smith, and I am um, in my second year at Northwood. I jumped in last year and taught an elective um, on 2020, and this year I'm helping lead the advanced research project, um, which builds on my own background in academia right now doing education research. Yeah, education research, which is culminating in what? <laughs> yeah. um, I will uh, defend my dissertation in about uh, two weeks. No, two weeks are today. It's the third. I have to call you doctor again. We'll see. You won't. <laughs> I probably won't. <laughs> it's probably fair. Which, uh, but that's a great accomplishment. How many years have you been working on it? Uh, this is the fifth year. Fifth, fifth year. year. And I moved up to Lake Placid so my husband to the North Country School uh, uh, two years ago, and I jumped in in the middle of the winter last year, and then have been helping to shape and kind of pilot this program in its first year. Yeah, and you've also been part of our 
academic task force, which has been a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, so to your right is the very lovely Lady Husky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm uh, Evie Sheridan. Um, my project's about small businesses in the uh, North Country, specifically focusing on Lake Placid and Key Valley. Um, I've just been diving in and interviewing different small business owners. That's awesome. And how many years now at Northwood? This is my second year at Northwood. And where are you going next year? Shameless plug. <laughs> Hamilton. Yeah, Hamilton. All right, that's great. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm David Garvey. This is also my second year here. And I'm doing a uh, project that's kind of shifting a little bit. It started as a deep dive into retroactivity as a legal concept. And now it's more focusing on the like, philosophy of law through the lens of cases that seem to flip-flop in uh, different ways every time they go into court. You mean there's no stare decisis? <laughs> no, there is not. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we'll get into this in a little bit. Um, I thank you both for being here. And I'll ask you why you got it in a second. But first, I want to jump back to Reed. And you know, what is the purpose of this program? Well, I think I was thinking about this. I, you know, it took me 30 years to get to the point where I could do this kind of learning. So I went to like a pretty cutthroat traditional independent school, and then I went to liberal arts colleges, and then I did a master's in American history. But I had to wait till I was like 30 years old and back doing a PhD to like have this kind of experience where I could be doing what you are doing and thinking of something from scratch and then building it up and learning the methods for how to do that. Um, and I, I think that that's invaluable. I think it's so cool to be able to bring this. It's there's like sort of a trust factor, you know, with this whole thing that like we're we're bringing something that's sort of usually reserved for like a sort of higher level of education and and offering it up as something that can be done at a really cool level with a lot of integrity at a, at a you know in a secondary setting. So that's all great. What does that mean in reality? You mean they're not sitting in a row and listening to a teacher <laughs> like? Can you, can you give me two seconds before I dive into them and ask them what they're yeah. experiencing? But how does it work from a teacher standpoint? Well, so I think we function more like a, like a work group or a research group. So there's like, I, was, I think it's very... So some people don't even know what a research group is. Yeah, so we don't, it's not, there's not, it's not hierarchical. Is that safe to say? Like, I, I bring some background knowledge about like, I've done research, so I can walk us through the steps, and it's more like the how to think about what research is and how to design a project from the ground up. But I don't come and say, here's our plan for the day, and here's a uh, quiz on what you read last night. It's all like we're bringing sort of our own pieces to the table and building something where nothing existed. So um, from the teaching standpoint, it's um, way less hierarchical. Like we Got it on the side. Together. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. But also um, just more colloquial, I would say. It's not like, we, I don't know, there's less formalities of what you think of as a sort of a classroom or like the scripts of like what dominate everyday life in a classroom. Um, and more just sort of free form and like takes three, the three of us are doing equal amounts of input, I would say. Like, what are we doing this week? And we're just sort of, we dialogue a lot on teams and just sort of where we are. And, um, so I would say this, this sort of, it's, it's not the same like script or ordinary sort of setup for when you have um, like a, a teacher in charge type. So, I mean, does that give you some agency? Do you get to choose some of the path that you've been taking? Definitely. I think, um, <clears throat> like, you decide how much work you want to put in. You decide, like, what material you're going to read to learn more about. Like, everything you're doing is, like, it's what you want to do. Well, and you said doing. You literally have done things, right? Yeah. If you're studying small businesses, what does that entail for you in real world? Like, what have you had to do? with the small businesses here on Main Street? I've um, had to interview a lot of people. Um, so those are like about an hour where I go through just um, kind of like this, where it's like questions, but they're changing by the responses, you know? Mm -hmm. Like just a lot of like taking the information they're gonna give me and then um, forming it all into like a collective like understanding. So there are 50, 75 businesses on Main Street. So you can most of them, all of them, some of them are good. <laughs> you gotta pick and choose, like, a lot of my focus has been how certain, like, odd businesses have, like, succeeded and been here for a while. So, like, give me an example. Give me an example of an odd business. Uh, like, the beef jerky place. Beef jerky. There you go. <laughs> Tell me about the beef jerky place. Well, to be honest, I haven't interviewed them yet. Okay. <laughs> but, um, so in Keene Valley, there's a, uh, there's a, the mountain store. Yeah. And obviously, there's a purpose for them, but they're 
going through COVID, they experienced a lot of changes, and those changes have carried through even, like, COVID's still going on, so they're still experiencing those changes. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you point that out, because uh, Rob Kane, who's an alum, mm -hmm. and his son went here as well, he uh, owns uh, Adirondack Steak and Seafood, or Adirondack uh, Brewing Company, mm -hmm. the brew company. And he always said, you know, I don't get it. You know, person opened up a popcorn store, I'm like, they're not going to make it. She bought her own building. Then he saw an ice cream place, said, they're not going to make it. They're killing it. Emma's is killing it. Beef jerky place, same thing. He said, I don't know if they'll make it, but the guy next to me is killing it. So this hot dog stand next to here, he said, if they ever open it up, they'll make a kill. I don't think they're going to open it up. But that's pretty cool that you get to talk to all these owners. So it's kind of in class, kind of out of class, Dave. Like, you're different. You're not working with people so much. You're working with material. Yeah. It's got to be a little different for you. Yeah, so basically what I've been doing this like entire time is uh, we found a really, really great online lecturer. I, I'm mm -hmm. blanking on his name right now. And what he's doing is he's running through like the entire backbone of law, uh, which is something called positivism. Uh, the idea that law was created by people uh, for people, you know, it's not some moral upbringing that has made law how it is now. That's a whole different story. But basically, we've been following through this, and now what I'm shifting to is I've been, well, I've been watching those, I've been reading background information, I've been reading passages from books from all of these really intense legal philosophers. And the next step is to take everything that I've learned from that and really take a deep dive into like case law. So one of the first ones I'm going to be looking at is a case called uh, Edward B. Benoit, uh, and that's all about retroactivity through like the highest court of the Supreme, like goes all the way up to the Supreme Court and even does something in, with the writ of habeas corpus. And it's all going to be, we're going to be looking at laws, how they are practiced through the lens of legal philosophy, which is going to be super cool to see like it all evolve out and see how everything is kind of interconnected, even though like we don't think about it like that. And it's pretty good time to do this because we now have a Supreme Court that is really looking yeah. at getting rid of some long-standing precedents. Yeah. Since we made the little quip about stare decisis. Yeah. This court doesn't seem to be afraid to say no stare decisis. So for those who don't know, stare decisis is past precedent. So yeah. do you find this an intriguing it, time to be doing this? It's really incredible to like be able to see all these uh, proceedings that are happening like right as we speak. Like right as we speak, there are probably pr proceedings going down in that building. And it's super cool to be like, you know, tomorrow I could wake up and there could be a huge news flash about something that I'm researching right now. And even if it's not something I'm like researching right now, it could be like right next to it. It could be parallel, running parallel with it. So that like chance and opportunity to see like what I'm researching evolve right in front of me is like, it's super cool to me. So what's the end product? Uh, the end product is to be determined in a way, but like, I, I know what I have right now and I know what I'm going to have in a few weeks. And it's just whatever way I feel, this is what I love about this course, whatever way I feel will present that information, what I've learned, what I've taken from it, the best, not only for like people I'm sharing information with, but for myself, because this class really is about my curiosity, I think. So will you deliver that in a traditional lab paper, or will you go untraditional and maybe do a, you know, a, a video, a reflection video? I, I think this whole process has been fairly untraditional. Mm -hmm. So the idea of a paper was something that like we flirted with in the beginning. But it, the, more I, the more I do it, the more I think, you know, I can't express everything well enough in the paper format to kind of spread out everything that I have been thinking. So I'm thinking it's going to be some sort of presentation, uh, oral video, even even a PowerPoint may do the job. That's just how I have to do it. And it doesn't even have to be just one of it. It can be a PowerPoint and a video, or a presentation and a PowerPoint, or literally whatever I feel will do the best for me is what's going to wind up doing the best for the class. Well, come see me, because that's kind of a, an area where I shine. Abby, how about you? So obviously, there's just, I just. Um, I feel I need to present it in a, a traditional poster format, maybe right around here, but we've also been uh, talking about the idea of opening up the hub and then having the BY interview to come in and like see what I found about the data I've collected and just in overall what I've taken from it, mm -hmm. just to like take what they give me and give some of it back. 
I love the live performance look too. So I'm going to leave the last. Go ahead. I was going to say what what I think is interesting about both of these projects is that I think that the real value, like we will produce something to be shared and displayed, and um, I think we all understand that like dissemination is a really big part of this, and we want to share what we found out with with a wider community. Speak to the people that that gave you your data, and then create whatever position statement you create and share up. But I think that the real, um, like the, the gift and the meat of what we produce won't be like a poster with whatever, 500 words of information. For you, it's the like intensive discussions that we've been doing and the, you know, just like our weekly meeting. Like those, that hour, that hour and a half where we're just talking and wading through concepts that neither one of us knew a week before, like that is the gift, that is the product. Our yeah. yeah. <laughs> For you, I would say the real, like the amazing thing is, yeah, like, we're definitely going to do findings, we'll make a great poster, you'll throw together a great presentation, but it's the like the interviews and the, when we had debriefs after the interviews, like, oh my god, can you believe they said that, and it resonates so much with what this other small business owner had, and I can't believe we're building towards this theme, and it's those, I don't know, it's almost just like the, the, the informal dialogue that like goes to pulling it all together, that is the product that makes us valuable. Let's take the question again. Yeah. Take the question. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so much, all Thank of you. you. Thank you. So we're going to transition yeah. from a structured advanced humanities course to the lack of structured independent studies. So thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. You. Come on over, uh, Heather O'Dell, and uh, yeah, really bad student Kate Broderick. I guess she is my daughter. Is going to come over. So uh, we're going to now transition to the the new program of independent studies. Twenty kids have uh, chosen a path to work in a field that they find interest in. And so we have the director of that program, Heather, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, thanks for being here. You were teaching your advanced, uh, or your humanities, combined humanities yeah. class. We, we can get to that a little bit later, but uh, you got to stay, you didn't have to leave. No, I stayed here, it was perfect timing. Yes, you, you yeah. would be here more often, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And Kate, welcome. Thank you. Haven't seen you in like five minutes since we drove over here together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all good. So. Let's dive in. Um, Heather, you, how'd this happen? Um, so you just spoke with our Dean of Academics, Noelle Carmichael, who um, does a fantastic job. And she, one of the things I think that she does really well is um, she, she identifies what the needs on campus. And then she speaks with the faculty who may be interested in sort of rolling with an idea. And so, Independent studies is not new at Northwood, um, but I think it just needed like a refresh. It needed a, a, a new direction. And so Noelle approached me and asked me if I might be interested in taking over the program. And I said, sure, that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, and so one aspect of the program that I wanted to change was we have so many talented um, alumni and community members that I thought, um, why don't we work to pair our students with alumni and community members um, to explore a particular field. So that's been the big change from what the program used to be um, when faculty, when Northwood faculty sort of served us as their mentors and now we have involved more alums and community members. So let's back up a little bit. How many years now have you been at Northwood? So this is my fifth year. Five years. Yeah. And you don't do anything other than independent studies, right? Right. It's my <laughs> sole focus. Um, so when I, when I first started here five years ago, I oversaw the international student um, program. And as things shift, so did my position. Um, and now I am teaching French. We had a couple of retirements. So if Shaq was your teacher, I'm sort of the new Shaq. Um, and I also teach the integrated humanities course at, at the 10th grade level with um, Lee Riffle, and I'm also the 10th grade class team. So you're never busy? Never busy. Never, never at all? Never a dull moment around here. So uh, we had this idea, we threw it out to the students, and lo and behold, what happened? So um, there was a lot of interest, which makes sense, right? Because if you're asking the student body, hey, do you think you'd want to take a course that you design where you get to work with a really talented expert in their field and you get to pursue a passion. Um, it was not, uh, it was a bit of a surprise that we had so many students um, applying, but it wasn't a surprise that there was some interest. 
Um, so our first application process was last spring, um, and Kate applied to the program along with um, maybe 20 or so other students, um, and it's just sort of continued from there. So Kate, introduce yourself. Some people may know you, but they remember you when you were in here, like <laughs> yeah. sitting right here. So go ahead. I'm Kate Broderick. This is my fourth year here at Northwood, his daughter. Um, yeah, so I'm doing an independent study on law and the practice of law. So you actually set me up with Alice and McGee, my mentor. Um, I just kind of wanted to take a, take a class that would give me perspective on if I wanted to go into the field of law. Um, so I've kind of just been working with Allison. She's been teaching me pretty much everything that she does and she knows. Um, so it's kind of helped me shape what I want to do and not figure out if it is what I want to do. Well, Allison was supposed to be here today, but she could not because she is since uh, decided to run for the Supreme Court for the state of New York. And she had to go to a meeting uh, related to that. So running, working with alongside with a woman who is running for uh, the state Supreme Court, that's pretty cool. Yeah, she's amazing. She's very talented at everything she does, and she's been super helpful with me the whole year. So, so let's go back. You talked about the process the kids had to apply. From your perspective, what was that like? So we first found out about like the option for independent studies, as you said, last spring. Um, and all the students had to write a first draft of their proposal. So um, you proposed to the ISP committee, which was a group of teachers. Um, ISP, instead. Independent But yeah. ISP, so everyone knows who I'm for. When we say ISP, that's inside baseball. Um, we're talking about the independent studies program, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was your first draft of proposal. You had to outline like what you wanted to study, like the topic um, of popular you could propose a mentor if you knew who you wanted to be with, um, say how long you wanted to do it for, and then kind of draft like your goals and um, what like the structure of it would be. Um, so you did it all on your own before you had feedback from teachers. And then there were a couple of selection um, dates, like over the summer you would hear back if you needed to work with the teacher to um, correct it or make any changes. Um, and then we found out it was approved, I think it was late summer before this year. Um, and then I'm doing mine for the whole year, so I started right away in the fall. So you get to shape it. So what does a week look like in independent studies for you? Yeah, so I meet with Allison like an hour and a half to two hours every week um, in the office. So I go into work with her. When you um, say work, what does that mean? Well, it depends. Um, we don't have a super structured plan when I go in. Um, I normally work on either a case that she's been working on recently or something that I asked to learn about. Um, I've worked on resolving tickets. Um, she's taught me about different DUI cases and charges. I've gone with her to election board meetings, um, a couple town court proceedings. You actually saw a pretty cool count, right? Yeah, I got to watch the um, counting of the local election ballots this fall. Why not um, close, right? Yeah, so I sat there for a couple hours watching um, the Board of Elections go through all the ballots and Democrat, Republican, um, where the votes went. So. And someone won, right? You knew before the public. I did, yeah. Well, it wasn't official um, before I left, but we could see who was in the running. So. Yeah, so Derek Doty beat uh, Northwood alum, Jay Rand, and you can do that before anyone else. That's pretty cool. Yeah, um, it so you, you go in there, it could be video of DUI, it could be you go to a, an election, you've been to some uh, town like uh, uh, hearings about code, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, the whole purpose of this independent studies is to what? To help me see if law is something that I really want to go into in the future. Um, I've been pretty interested, as you know, for a couple of years, but I didn't really know like what it was in real life, like most of my perception of law was from like TV shows or books or things that I'd seen. TV um, shows specifically. <laughs> law and order. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it kind of just to learn more about like what law is and Allison's kind of walked me through how to do some of it. Um, so I've learned to, like I said, resolve traffic tickets, um, read the penal law books, other things like that. So uh, interesting thing, and I know this because we've, we've spoken, what's the advice all the lawyers are giving you? Don't go to law school. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Um, they haven't really said. It's a little discouraging, but right now I'm still interested, so we'll see how it goes. Do you think they're playing a little psychological game with you where they want to see how much you really want to be in law? Maybe, see if I'm cut out for it. I don't yeah. know. 
So we're getting close to the end. How does this wrap up, Heather? How do we get these 20 kids? And what are some of the other ones? We know law with Kate. Yeah. So what are some of the other ones? That so there is a real vast array of independent studies. Um, we have students exploring guitar theory. We have a student who is learning more about the group of seven, which is a uh, group of Canadian landscape artists. Um, all the way to a student who you'll meet later on who is interested in neuroscience, um, you know, uh, medicine. Um, so it's a real array, um, climate change. And so the studies are as unique as the student's interests, um, which is lovely to see. Um, That's great. So they'll all have some sort of final presentation, some final work that they'll submit a portfolio, it could be, mm -hmm. and then the committee, the ISP committee, right. will get together and evaluate the work. Right, so um, similar to what Reed Smith, Reed Smith said earlier, a lot of the, um, you know, the, the best thing, for lack of a better term, about programs like these is just is the process. Yeah. I mean, even the applica application process that you had to go through applying creating a proposal, meeting with a committee, getting feedback from your mentor, drafting a, a final proposal that serves as the outline of your course is already an experience before you even hit the ground running with your independent study. Um, so I think moving forward, we're, uh, the committee is just looking forward to supporting students in taking ownership of their learning and supporting their interests and really just sort of watching it all unfold, because they do good work. Well, selfishly, I can't wait. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good luck, Kate, with that. Thank you. you got to figure out how you're going to finally wrap it up. Thank you. You're doing a great job. Thank, Thank you. you so much. All right. That's awesome. All right, so we'll let them slide out. And uh, one of the new programs we have in the last two years, and Ms. Carmichael didn't really mention this, is dance. And I have a troop of dancers hopefully coming up to join me right now. Come on around. How many do we have? Do we need more chairs? We have four of you. I'm going to move my chair out of the way, and you can sit on the chairs. There you go. Welcome, ladies. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's exciting to have you here. Right? We're showcasing dance, which has been dear to my heart. My older daughter, Morgan, was a dancer. So uh, let's save some time. Introduce yourself. How many years you've been here? And, uh, you know, some of your other interests beside dance. So we'll start. Um, hello. My name is Amanda. I've been here at Longford for three years, and another interest I have is rowing. I am Julian Clark, and this is my second year at Northwood, and I'm also interested in volleyball. I'm Ruby Lewin, this is my second year at Northwood, and I'm interested in psychology. I'm Ruby Mayori, this is my second year at Northwood, and I'm really passionate about art. Awesome. Ladies, thank you so much. So, three of the four of you are local. Yeah, and did, let me ask you this, did you come to Northwood because of the relationship with the dance sanctuary? Was that the deciding reason? Had you been looking at it before, but because we didn't have dance, you didn't want to come? What do you think? Yeah, I definitely think um, the dance program being started here through our local studio was definitely the deciding factor for a lot of us. And uh, for, I think most of us, is how we found out about Northwood. Um, you know, we were kind of introduced to that in the ocean. Yeah, I was definitely through the studio. So walk me through that. You live in Saranac Lake, correct? Mm -hmm. So you're in Saranac Lake, you go to the Saranac Lake High School, the what you know about Northwood is probably a bunch of rich preppy kids, right? Um, but what happened? How did you three local girls end up here? What was the process like? You know, was it the interview, was it the classes, was it the dance teachers? What what sold you eventually in coming here? The dance teachers in the studio. Um, Miss Manny brought in the idea and then she was like, we're going to have this more formal meeting about it and just hearing all about Northwood and the real collaboration with it was really interesting because of the educational opportunities um, along with the collaboration of uh, dance and getting to dance more. That idea was definitely enticing. I'd say um, kind of just like that academic side of things also was a good pulling factor. As opposed to the school of Saranac Lake, you get a lot more like intimate teaching and with smaller classes, it's more engaged. And I think that was also very interesting to everyone. And how's it working out? Again, you're here. Is the dance working out the way that you hope? Yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, we're 
training a lot more than we would get to normally. We're getting a lot of um, academic dance classes, so like the choreography course that the three of us are in. Um, yeah, definitely was more focused on something that we love, getting to kind of keep it um, that love for the dance that we have. So the lone order. How did you end up? <laughs> was dance part of the reason you came to Northwood? Um, it wasn't. I was mostly here. I mostly the main reason I came here was for academics. But Miss Carmichael had this really great drama program, and she also did dance on my like, Tuesdays and Thursday mornings. So when she was talking about like how the dance sanctuary is gonna come over to Northwood, I was like, okay, you know, that's that's enticing. So that's how I ended up here right now. Now you're all different levels in dance, or the three of you in the same? How does dance work? Some people don't even know. All right, so I know, and I, I should I should be the one. So how does it work uh, as a dancer? Like we know in hockey, there are a couple boys teams, a couple soccer teams, and baseline, right? How does it work as a dancer? Who wants yeah. to take it? Yeah. Um, so our, our studio specifically, it's it's different at every studio. You'll have a different number of levels. We have six levels, um, and as well as adult classes. So uh, the three of us are in level six, and then. Level five. So what does that mean? You know, it says it's level five. What are you working on? Is it ballet oriented? Is it modern? Is it jazz, tap? Like what are we talking about? You've got the opportunity to take mostly everything. Like there's, I think we all take ballet, contemporary, jazz, hip hop, and then uh, we have a night for our senior company, which is level six, and then N5, which is um, the senior company. But we get the opportunity to like branch out and try all different genres, which is really nice. Like just trying everything and getting a feel for what it's all like. What's your favorite? Hip hop. What's yours, Jillian? Um, probably hip hop or contemporary. Okay. Hip hop or contemporary. Okay. <laughs> uh, ballet and modern. Ballet and modern. Uh, I'm swing dancing and jitterbug, so if you want to do that, good and how to flip people, it's fun, it's great. Uh, I'd be bad at hip hop, it would take me a while to get it. So, um, what do you think the value of having dance in Northwood is for Northwood? Interesting question. Yeah, yeah. I think that having dance in Northwood is something that you can revolutionize the art aspect of the school. And I think it gives the students a real, genuine appreciation of art and movement, especially since like there are classes here with people learning how to dance and like, how to move their body in ways that help them. I think it makes the student body and even the faculty members have a, be more appreciative of these types of things. Yeah, our first formal dinner, what did we all do? My dancing. My dancing. That was, uh, I couldn't be there, but the photos were great. Um, that's really interesting. I, I think that's right. And the first year was in COVID, so you didn't really get to perform, right? When was the first performance? Did you do one at the end of the year last year, like a mini one? Yeah, there was a mini one. That yeah. was smaller. I think it was video. Like, yeah, they performed and they posted it on the Instagram yeah. so that everyone could see it. No live audience, but that's going to change. Yes. Yeah, we had a live show, the um, Christmas, show, Christmas show in December. And that was kind of quick, but right now you're in the throes of it, right? Mm -hmm. What's going on? So people, again, dance that. I understand <laughs> all about the end of the year. What are you actually preparing for right now? Uh, I can do this one. Um, so we have a show just for Saranac Lake in the community there, April 1st and 2nd. And then we are performing for Northwood again on the 27th. And that'll be all of the dances we've been working on since January, and also um, the dance pieces that the three of us are making in our academic choreography class. So you're actually designing the piece? Yes. yes. Is that a collaborative teamwork type thing? Yes, yeah, so it's just yeah. the three of us doing a self choreographed um, piece for the show. Will it be contemporary, or will it be modern? Will it be a bit of hip hop? What's it got? All three. <laughs> Even better, right? Get about that. What does it take to be in dance? How many hours do you train? I mean, what most people don't understand, they hear dancer, they don't think athleticism, but it is truly a very intense, deep tissue athletic endeavor. Uh, for off, you know, just well, first of all, 
what's an average day of dance? How much are you in the studio? How long? Um, two, well, three hours. two to three hours. Two to three hours. Yes. And a lot of that is dancing, performing, training, right? Mm -hmm. How do the legs feel after that? Great. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, right? Okay, so two to three hours a day, and that's how many days a week? Four. Four, Four. days a week. That's pretty yeah. intensive. That's, yes. that's easily a load that any of our athletes do or more. And then, are there work that you do outside? Is there stretching, Pilates, other things that you do? Oh, yeah. I'm always training every day on our own. Yeah, every day you're doing something just to improve the craft. Yeah. Um, what does dancing give you? And that's a very personal <laughs> question. And I, I would love it to be a, a personal answer. Like, what is it about dance uh, that it helps you see the world in your way, right? There's, there's something about dance that I think, uh, and I'll be honest, I took dance. I, was, uh, I took dance in prep school, and I took one of my few A's in college was a modern dance class. So, I am actually a fan. Um, we'll start with you. Um, I think dancing gives me a way to express myself emotionally in ways that sometimes words can't um, words can't describe. I just think that it's just another way, like a visual way of people that people use to kind of show like who they are and like how they feel. That's just my opinion. Okay. Um, for me, like going to dance after right after school at the end of the day is kind of just a way to release the stress from the day and just unwind and kind of reflect on everything. And also just performing, I really like seeing how it like affects people and seeing their reaction to it. And like when my dancing makes people happy, it makes me happy. So I kind of perform to make people happy. Um, I, it feels like a breath of fresh air to me to like walk into the studio. It's a very like safe space. I'm not afraid to like make mistakes just to get better because like there's like that aspect of feeling where like will make you better and just all that practice. Um, it just it's such a good feeling to get up on that stage after like failing and getting back up and trying again and just that rush of getting on stage is just so fulfilling. So really working towards that is just like. It's such a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely agreeing with all of these opinions. But yeah, it's a way for me to express my emotions, the things that I'm feeling, the things I want to communicate to other people um, through my dancing. Performing is just the best feeling in the world. It is really just a way to make people feel something. Um, and kind of, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's a really good way to get out your emotions. And yeah, it is such a safe space at the studios, and um, the teachers do a really good job of creating an environment that is comfortable and that is um, just something that we can cultivate really good energy in. Centers you, grounds you, it gives you back hugs, that's awesome. Uh, final question, and uh, not to put you on the spot, um, and I, I'm going to ask this question not for the reason you think I'm asking it. Um, do you think you pursue dancing in college, yes or no? Um, professionally, probably not. I'm probably not at that level yet, but I would definitely do like clubs, like okay. dancing college clubs for sure. Yeah, Julie? Yeah, I think definitely either minoring in dance or joining a dance team or something like that just to keep it in my life and keep it being a positive thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, I want to keep that um, de-stressing kind of activity in my life. It, Helped me a lot, so definitely. Yeah, 100. Um, for me, I don't think I'll be professionally pursuing dance, but 100 percent either minoring or I've been doing a lot of teaching of kids classes at this local studio. So definitely looking into that um, for the future. I really enjoy teaching. And this is why I ask the question. A lot of athletes say, "Oh, I want to be D1, play pro," and yet here you are, two to three hours a day, working very hard at it dedicated to it, it gives you something back that is um, liberating, but you're not doing it because you want it to be a career, you're doing it because you just love it. How wonderful that is. Thank you ladies for being here, this is great. I got one more interview and we gotta wrap up, so can't Thank wait you. to watch Thank the dance show. That would Thank be outstanding. Jasmine, come on over. So my apologies, we're running a little long, but. 
if you're going to run long, you're going to run long with the most important thing you have, and that's academics. And I wanted to finish today uh, with Jaslyn. Um, Jaslyn, you can introduce yourself. Uh, where are you from? How long you been here? Uh, come. Okay, so I'm Jaslyn Luberis. This is my third year at Northwood, and I'm from Elizabeth, New Jersey. Elizabeth, New Jersey. Where's Elizabeth, New Jersey? See, it's sometimes people think only New York City, and then they think Newark. So I'd say kind of in between, like 30 minutes from Penn Station, but like 20 minutes from North New Jersey. So you're in the shadows of New York. Yeah. How did you end up in Northwood? So I came through a program called NJ Seeds for um, low-income New Jersey students. So that was definitely a long application process because the whole Seeds process is about two years, including application. Mm -hmm. But they help you find um, independent schools, apply to them, advocate on your behalf. So NJ Seeds, as in the seed. Yeah. Yeah, a seed. <laughs> Their whole effort is to take kids and give them an opportunity uh, that they might not get. Yeah, exactly. Because if you look at public schools in our area, they definitely don't have the highest rate of excellency. Yeah. <laughs> so. so why Northwood? It, you must have looked at several schools. How did you end up at our doorstep? One of the biggest things for me about Northwood was the environment that I saw on the tour. And the tour guide ended up being like one of my best friends once I came to Who Northwood. Was that? Jazzy. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I can definitely feel a different kind of vibe that I felt from other schools. Like when you were on the tour, everyone said hi to you, and it just felt very welcoming. Meanwhile, on other school tours, they were just like, "Oh, boy, the kid who was on the tour." Oh really? Yeah. So. That's not nice. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they weren't thinking that, but that's just how it felt at like other school tours. So we could have had you up here in that last session, right? Because you danced, right? Yeah, I do. How did you find dance? What was there? So my mom danced in her childhood. So I started dancing at three, but definitely not the intensity I do now. Only like one class a week, two classes a week. And um, I stopped for a bit in middle school. But once I came back here, I definitely knew I wanted to pursue it again, especially um, with doing it a majority of my life, and like Amanda said, I started with Carmichael's dance class until the implementation of the dance sanctuary. That's great. So, you're here for the academics. Yeah. What are you taking as an academic load right now? <laughs> um, AP U.S. History, AP Biology, AP Literature, Honors, Pre-Calc, um, Spanish 3, and Printmaker. Woo! You're a better student than I was, so give me that credit right there. How's it going in classes? You're doing well? Um, pretty well. Surprisingly, the APs aren't my hardest class. I'm not the best at math, so math has become my struggle this year. Math. Drives you crazy. Um, what's the biggest difference between the type of education you had back in Elizabeth, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and the type of education you're getting now? Um, this can go two ways because the environment is a big factor, but um, the individualism that you get um, with your education here at Northwood, like we talked about the independent study program earlier, and that's very individualized, but also they give you opportunities that you wouldn't get other schools because we're such a small school. Like we offer two languages at Northwood, but I know multiple students taking languages online or on other platforms that I wouldn't have been able to get other schools. Like, you don't like the language? Oh, well, you still have to yeah, take it. Yeah, right. Yeah, and also the LEAP program is very individualized because I'm going to Vietnam this year. You other, are? Yeah. That's so cool. Other people are doing, like, farm to table or they're going to Iceland, and it's very individualized as I can choose where I want to go, you can choose what you want to do out of the classroom. Yeah. What are your goals coming down the road? You're a junior mm -hmm. entering the college process. Yeah. Where are we going to see you in a couple years? Uh, the world of medicine. That's oh, really? the plan as of right now. Yeah. Are you going to do an independent study next year based on medicine or the advanced science research program? So I started the independent study process this year. I got approved of it. And I was supposed to um, shadow a physical therapist and an orthopedic surgeon at the local hospital. But with the rising cases of COVID, it kind of got shut down. So we decided to move my independent study to next year in hopes right. that cases will be lower and I can actually get hands-on in the process. That's awesome. 
Will you do the advanced, or will you probably be AP Bio next year then? No, I'm an AP Bio now. Right, Miss Walker, who everyone loves, mm -hmm. everyone, every doctor and nurse that's ever come out of her said, I want to thank Miss Walker for inspiring me to be this person. Um, so will you do the advanced science program then maybe too? Yeah, I think so. Miss Carmichael, who you guys saw earlier, she's also my advisor, so we've been speaking about plans for that as well. Do you think being here at Northwood, you've been able to grow as a person? Do you feel like you've yeah. gained independence? Like, what's the biggest difference when you go home and you talk to your parents? Do you notice, do they notice some, a change in you? Like, or is it all just the same, turn back into the young kid you were? Um, I've always been very independent because I was an only child for seven years before my um, other siblings came along. So I've always been a very independent person. And it was just me and my mom for a while. So we would always just like, she'd take me anywhere and like, of course she has adult friends. So we'd be like, oh, she's so mature. And like, I grew up around adults, so I don't know. Um, my mom tries to baby me. Sometimes I go home, she's like, oh, let me do your laundry. I'm like, no, it's okay. <laughs> I got it. No way, mom. I'm, I'm going to take care of this. Um, so, is your plan to go to a high-powered school? What were you hoping to do? Um, I don't know. I have lots of reach schools. I need to start looking at more match schools right now, but I don't know. I like the small um, community of Northwood, but I think I want to change it up just a little bit and maybe go a little bigger. But as of right now, what college I want to go to, I'm not sure. Well. The reason I asked you, out of all the students at Northwood, is that I admire you. Thank you. Um, I watch you walk around campus. You're a leader. Your group, you have a tight knit group of friends, but you're yeah. able to branch out and you talk to other people. And more importantly, you're not afraid to, to step up and lead. So we're very fortunate. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for being here. I'm going to wrap up, and uh, we'll make sure you get back to school. Thank you. You're welcome. This is awesome. Thank you, Jasmine. So uh, we went a little long. We're trying to be 40 minutes, and we're now at 55. Um, we do have our next segment coming up. And what we're going to do is talk about some of the unique programming that's coming at Northwood at 6 o'clock. This is value-added learning, things like the finance club, things like robotics, entrepreneurship, uh, design thinking, some new stuff, knock. We've heard a lot about knock. We're going to bring that forward. I do want to say that at the end of the segment, when you talk uh, to Jaslyn, she is exactly the kind of student that benefits from people ringing the bell. Um, obviously, uh, when you put money into the general fund, it can go to scholarships, it can go to helping students, like in the case of her going to Vietnam, uh, there are scholarships available for students so that they can go to these experiences regardless of whether or not uh, their family can afford it. And that's really an important thing. If Marcy Fagan were here right now, she would say, you're marking money for LEAP, we have give rich, opportunities for kids that they can't get. So we thank you all for ringing the bell. We went a little long. We'll be back at 6 o'clock. Really cool stuff going on. If you thought this was great, come back at 6. It's going to get even better. Once again, I'm Brody. Thank you all for being here, and we'll see you at 6 o'clock.